Hi, it's Glenn, and in this video, we're going to look at how to set up your new AccuSense cameras with the LiveGuard firmware. Now, this is an excellent upgrade. It enables you to arm and disarm your cameras and also control the audible messages and flashing lights and notifications that come through to your phone. So it's well worth setting up if you do have any of the Gen 2 AccuSense cameras. Stage one of this process is to look at the NVR. The NVR is basically where the LiveGuard software resides. It's a firmware upgrade for the NVR. It won't work on every NVR. In fact, at this stage, it works with the i-series NVRs, but only the eight channel and the 16 channel versions. It won't work with the four channel version. So at the very least, the ds dash 7608NI or 16NI are suitable for this upgrade. The firmware version that's required for this to work is V4.40.010 and the build is 210423. Now this can change in future but this is the current version and a copy of this can be found on our website at securityperth.com.au or securityqueensland.com.au. Please beware that when you do upgrade firmware, you are taking a little risk. It can make your NVR stop working completely, and it is not covered by height vision in any way, shape, or form, unless it is done by an authorized installer or distributor. So yes, you can do it yourself, but you must be careful when you're doing it and understand the risks that are involved. You're far better off getting a licensed professional to do it for you and then you've obviously got that covered. So what we're looking at here is the page when you log into the NVR. Um, you can see I've got a, I've just typed in the network address of the NVR, in my case 192.168.1 and then 100. If you don't know what your network address is for your NVR, you can just go into the NVR and look it up under the network settings. I will uh, just overlay quickly where that is for you. So you should be looking at that now on how to get into that to find the network address. Once you've got into the actual NVR, then we can start to set up the parameters needed for the LiveGuard function. Now the first thing that needs to be set up is actually on the cameras themselves, not in the NVR. So what we need to do is we need to get into the back end of the camera and make some changes. So if I click here under system and go into camera management, you'll see under IP cameras, a list of cameras here. And you'll notice that there's a little link over here, which is a URL that gets you into the back end of those cameras. Now, if you don't see this, what you need to do is you need to go into network, you need to go into advanced settings, you need to go into other, and you need to check this little box here, which is enable virtual host. Once you do that and hit the save, then under system, camera management, these URLs will appear. Okay, they will not appear unless you have that enable virtual host checked. So the camera that we're working with today is the 8 megapixel Gen 2 AccuSense camera. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to open this up in a new tab. So if I click over to this, you can see I'm now in here. I've logged in. Obviously I haven't shown you my username and password, but you'll use your username and password to get in. And you can see you're in the camera. It's got the same address as the NVR. See, that's the NVR. This is the camera, but we have a port and port three is this camera three. So this is the actual camera. It's confusing because they look very, very similar. So you just need to make sure you are in fact in the right section. Now, as far as the camera is concerned, there's only a couple of things that we need to change. They are both in the event area. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to enable motion detection. So how we want LiveGuard to work is we want it to record all motion, regardless of whether or not the system is in an armed state. And we want to be able to obviously turn on when we arm the LiveGuard cameras, we want to turn on the active deterrence features. So to do that, we need to enable some smart events because we don't enable any of the active deterrence features from motion detection. 
Those are all done from intrusion or line crossing generally. But we do want to record everything that's going on, any movement in front of the camera, regardless of whether or not the system is armed or disarmed. So, as I mentioned, the first thing to do is to enable motion detection here by checking these two boxes. And then we're going to go across these tabs here to linkage method. Now, the one box that must be ticked, this is in the camera, is notify surveillance center. One thing to understand with height vision is the hierarchy of the devices that you have in relation to the Height Connect app. So these cameras have the ability to directly connect to the Height Connect app or they can go through the NVR which then connects to the Height Connect app. So in our situation we have the cameras connected directly to an NVR and the NVR is connected to the Height Connect app. So by us ticking this Notify Surveillance Center, it is actually only notifying the NVR. It isn't going through to the Height Connect app at all. This trigger recording is actually, if you've got an SD card in the camera, you can leave it checked, it's checked by default, but it won't really matter as far as this is concerned because it's the NVR that's going to be doing the recording. So the only thing you need to make sure is that motion detection is enabled and you have Notify Surveillance Center enabled on the camera. Now we go to Smart Events and as I said the main ones that are going to be used are Intrusion and Line Crossing. You can use any of them but these are the two that we predominantly use. In this case I'll just give the example with just Intrusion Detection. We just want to have it enabled and then under Linkage Method we want to again make sure that Notify Surveillance Center is checked. This will ensure that that information, any events that the camera picks up is passed through to the NVR. Now if those are the only two things you need to set up as far as detection is concerned, you are done with the camera. If we go into line crossing, I haven't got this enabled. I just tend to use one smart event per camera and also just one basic event in the form of motion detection. Now that I've finished setting those up and I've hit save on here, I don't worry about actually setting up any of the parameters for those devices either by the way. I'm just literally taking, checking those boxes and going into linkage method and making sure Notify Surveillance Center is done. Once I've done both of those things and hit save, I'm now going to close that tab so that I don't get confused later on and maybe I'm in the wrong section because as I said the NVR and the camera have menus that look almost identical. So now we've set that up, we need to set up the events in the actual recorder. So again, we see similar sort of a menu here and just always watch out with the recorder. Whenever you flick between events, basic and smart event here, it will always default back to channel one. Okay, so in our case, we're working with the third channel, which is this eight megapixel Gen 2 AccuSense. So I must click on that. We can see in here that it is enabled, and this is the bit that actually trips people up. If we look under linkage method, we can see it's recording onto channel three. That's all perfect. But this Notify Surveillance Center is no longer checked. And the reason for that is we do not want to get notifications every single time someone moves in front of that camera. Yes, we set it up in the camera because we want to record all of the events, so we want those passed through to the NVR, but we don't want to get the notifications sent through to our Height Connect app. So when you're in the actual recorder, you ensure that this is unchecked, okay? You can put it on and get notifications, but then you won't be able to turn it off that live guard feature, you'd sort of be overriding that. So in essence, what we're trying to do is we're trying to control when we receive notifications by arming and disarming in the app. So first thing is make sure it's enabled, but make sure Notify Surveillance Center in the recorder is off. Now we're gonna go through to Smart Event, and as I said, it's gonna default you back to the first camera. We don't want that one. We're working on the AccuSense. So from here, we can see Enable Intrusion Detection is on. It is very similar to the other video which I showed you how to set up these sorts of parameters, you know, minimum, maximum size. You can go to that video and review those sorts of settings. 
This is mainly the settings that are required to get LiveGuard to work perfectly for you. Okay, so I won't go into all of these extra bits in this video, it'll just get too long. So we've enabled intrusion detection. The arming schedule, I always just leave that on because again, we're gonna use the app to turn things on and off. And under linkage method, again, you turn everything off. We just want to trigger a recording. We don't want notify surveillance center. We don't want audio and light. We don't want anything switched on. We want them all switched off. I'm gonna hit save on that. All right, the other setting that you can change from the NVR is how the light works on your AccuSense camera. In this case, we've only got one AccuSense camera here, so it's only giving me that one option. We could have done this from the camera itself, but I wanted to get you in and out of that camera as soon as possible because it does get confusing because the menus look so similar. So we just wanted to make those small little changes and then we want to do everything from this NVR. So the flashing light output, by default it comes I believe with high frequency set on, that means if it picks up an event and the live guard feature is enabled, i.e. you've turned it on, it's armed, it picks someone up and it will just flash that strobe light. I much prefer to have this setting normally on and hit save. What that will do is that will literally turn that white light on and that's got the added benefit of illuminating the area which means that the black and white picture that you normally get from your AccuSense Gen 2 at night will then transform into a full color image like it does on the color view camera. So I really like that feature. If you have it on the strobe or one of those high frequency settings, it won't do that. It'll just stay black and white and it's hard to obviously identify people's clothing, etc. So I much prefer turning this to normally on and then this is the duration it's going to stay on. So I might change that to 25 seconds. You can have it on for as long as or little as you like. Just bear in mind, it does take a second or two to flick over to that color mode. The IR filter drops out and then it flicks over to full color mode. So if you set that flash duration too short, you wouldn't get that effect. You would literally stay black and white. So I've just extended mine to 25 seconds. That gives us heaps of time for that light to stay on and get the full color image from the recording. Now we look at the audible options and we can see here that we've got different ones. We've got the warning and we've got the prompt. I normally go for the warning. At my front door, it says, welcome, please notice that the area is under surveillance. And that seems to work quite well for me. Now it's obviously different. You wouldn't want the welcome message if they've jumped over your back fence and they're breaking into El Fresco area. You might want that a little stronger. So you've obviously got different ones there, including the siren noise, which is the common one that you hear, you know, generally when alarms are triggered. So have a play with those and you can decide which ones work for you. You can in fact also record your own message. I will show you how to do that in a subsequent video, but that is also possible. Once you've set it up here, you can't change it in the app, so you can turn it on and off. So you need to just choose which one you want. And then if you ever do want to change it, you're going to have to come back here to choose a different message. It's only one at a time, unfortunately, at this stage. And it can't change either. You can't have it at some time play one message and at another time play another one. But I'm sure that's a feature that they may do sometime in the future. So you can adjust the sound volume, etc., and hit save. Wherever you see the arming schedule, I'll just leave that permanently on because again, we are using the app on their phone to do all of the turning on and turning off functions. Okay, so that is it as far as the settings that are required in the camera and also on the NVR. Now I'm gonna flick over to the mobile phone and show you how it works for the end user using the Hike Connect app.